I found some data that I've been missing for like the last five years, which is freaking crazy if you think about it. But as you can see from the streaming data on the screen here, there's some longer packets that I wasn't getting before. Those packets contain some pretty exciting stuff that I don't know what the heck it is yet because it seems like they're encrypted or encoded or something. But every time you do a meter read, every time I go online to the Smart Meter Texas website and I click get meter read, these new packets are sent along with some of these other smaller packets that seem like maybe there's some kind of um, acknowledgement or something else, but it's filling in a lot of the blanks that I didn't have answers to before. Now you'll see these packets, there's a lot of information in them. Um, and what's pretty exciting is I know for sure looking at this where it's coming from. How do I know? Well, I published some new tools on the GitHub site that allow you to decode the GPS coordinates, um, and a bunch of other stuff, plot stuff in Google um, Earth, a bunch of cool things we'll see. But this new packet, we can see here that the destination is my meter. This is my meter right here. And the source is this. Well, if I look at the source, we do Python, GPS, and we paste in this information, it'll decode it to some coordinates. And if we take these coordinates and we come over here to Google Maps, Let's see where it takes us. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that is. Oh, that looks like a substation, doesn't it? Now, my house is right around here. And so it's basically the request is coming from here, bouncing across the smart meter network over to my house. And then the request goes back. I've followed this request a bit by going to the different meters and then doing a request next to it. So what I look at is, I look here and I see that in this next packet, in the response, the destination is this meter here. And what it does is, uh, it's basically sending my message from this, from my meter, and it's saying, I believe, to go to this next meter. Now, if we look at this one, we can come over here to Google Earth, and I did a little bit of um, a drive around to capture data, you could say. Quite a bit of data, all the way from my house, all the way up to where that substation was up there. What it did is, it gave me a cool map to come here and then do a search. So if I look at my meter, here it is. Here's my meter on the map right there. Now where's this other meter? Oh, this other meter's down here. Now what's interesting is I've tracked it. So I went next to that meter. I did a read and I listened and it gave me another meter. And what's weird you'll see is that it's like uh, it bounces down a one way. This is actually away from the substation. Then it goes up here. Then it went to another one here. And then it kind of went into the void. Um, so I'm trying to track down where it went after that. All of this data here, it definitely is the key to figuring out what's going on. And so why was I missing this? I was completely missing this data when we we're looking at this flow graph here. So let's just get a quick overview of this flow graph. This right here is a software defined radio. So like a USRP B200 um, or an RTL SDR or something else, and it comes through here and it gets tagged. This block is pretty critical. What it does is, it every time it sees a burst, it puts a tag on that little burst so that the rest of the flow graph can process it. If it doesn't tag the burst, it's gone. It's not going to see it. So the first step was to figure out, was I tagging every burst? I've had this nagging feeling for a long time that I was missing some data. But I couldn't figure it out. I'd look at everything, 00FF2A, and I'd try to process I and check the CRCs. What was wrong fundamentally is that not all data starts with 00FF2A. It does all start 00FF, but the most important data doesn't have a, a 2A there. I also don't know how to check the CRC, so I think I was losing it um, into the noise a bit. It also does this other thing where it violates the start and stop bit sequence and it puts multiple packets together. So all of that, what I did is I created a new block called the deframer. The deframer deals with all that, but let's go back to this burst tagger. So here's some raw data 
that I captured. What I did was kind of the aha moment is I went next to my smart meter. I put a software defined radio right next to it. I then attenuated the input. So I basically, I almost silenced the input on the, the, the radio. So no, no antenna, like uh, basically just covered it up entirely and turned the gain way down so that all it would hear was transmissions from my meter. Then what I did is I looked at those transmissions. So here's in spectrum. And as we go across here, we'll see transmissions that came from my meter. Here's one. Now, and it's a good looking transmission, right? It's, you know, it's ideal. Everything's quiet around there and here's this burst of data. That's what happens when you basically get right next to something and you get rid of all the other noise. Now, I wasn't able for the longest time to tell. Like this whole flow graph was kind of like a black box to me, except at the end. So packets would come out and I'd deal with those packets. And what I realized is, is that perhaps I'm not getting all of them. So how do you check? I put this radio right next to the meter. I did a meter read, and this capture represents every packet that my meter sent back. I couldn't hear what was coming to the meter because I have it turned way down, but I could hear everything my meter was trying to send back. Now, what can you do with that? I can then add this other block called a uh, Metafile Writer. This is courtesy of Jacob Gilbert. Uh, he's got a great... Um, GitHub and does a ton of work. This whole flow graph essentially came from work that him and Sandia Labs did. I can take this, I can put it here, and what it will do is every, all the bursts that get tagged, it saves it to a file. And that file has meta, it's basically a metadata file that you can add to in Spectrum to overlay onto the data. So this data here, if I click this, it overlays this thing here that shows, okay, I did in fact tag this properly. Now, I did that for all the data that I received. There's not a lot of it. There's some, some few little bursts here you see. And so I said, okay, are they tagged? Yes. Here's a few that are probably the most important. This would be the, the new reads. What I can do is at the bottom of this flow graph, this block here, this PDU align, it's what matches on the sync that comes from Gridstream. Um, and it seems to work even with these newer bursts. Um, it, they still don't violate that sync. So everything's fine there. What I do is I count how many messages came out of here. And then I add the same counter before this deframer block I'd written on the end of my Gridstream block. And what I see is, hey, 10 messages, whatever it is, went in. How many messages came out? Lo and behold, it wasn't 10. And so they're clear as day. They made it through the PDU align block, which means they have the proper headers for grid stream. So I was missing that data. I then essentially hand decoded every single one of those messages to figure out what was going on. And that's how I discovered that those pristine messages, they have different CRCs or it's encrypted or whatever it is, but I was missing that data. Um, and it's the most critical data. So what it led me to do is break up these two blocks. So Gridstream used to handle everything, the deframing, the decoding, all that. I said, okay, the deframing needs to be a separate block that all it does is deframe the data. And it deals with these interesting cases. Like if we look at this packet, so this here is the packet broken up. So all of this right here is the one packet itself, this one new packet. And I broke it up to show what the different pieces are. And we see that the, the data here is going and all of a sudden it puts a new 00FF. And so it violates the start and stop bits. It, it starts a new, you know, kind of burst within the same thing. So a new, a new packet within the whole frame or whatever. And it puts more data. So I was missing all that stuff because I wouldn't, when I would check the start and stop bits, I would just basically check that there was 10 bits I would discard the start and stop bit and I would decode the stuff in the middle. And, and then I would check the CRC and if the CRC computed properly, I would say that's a good packet. But I wasn't really checking the start and stop bits. In the new deframer, I actually check is the start bit a zero, is the stop bit a one. And I also check if they violate the start and stop bit and I check for a new potential packet that come through and I deal with the differences between Gridstream version four and version five. So if you look at the source code, it's not that um, complex how it is, but you'll see in there that I deal with those different cases. So now what comes out of the deframer block is, you know, data that's been processed properly 
for the grid stream block to deal with, to do things like look at the destination address or the source address and check the CRCs and things like that. Now, the challenge is this new data, uh, the CRC, the, the length of the packet, stuff like that, they're not, they're not the same as the other ones, and I don't know what they are yet, so I don't have a way of checking them currently. Um, but it does seem to broadcast the same packets multiple times, and you can check that all the bytes are the same basically in there, and be fairly sure that you have the proper data until we figure out how to uh, decode the CRC and everything. Now, I also created some additional blocks that have been published to GitHub, and these are down here at the bottom. So there's a Google Map and a Google Earth block. Now, the Google Earth block does something cool. It basically creates a KML file as the flow graph is running, and at all the meter reads that it picks up that GPS data, it takes that along with the uptime from the meter, and it puts it on in a KML file. Now, in that KML file, you can have it load in Google Earth while you drive around. And that's how I was able to create this map. Now it'll do it live. So as you're going, all these things will just populate on the map. They'll appear, they'll pop up and their height above the ground. Let's just go down here and you can see it. Their height above the ground is a reflection of how long they've been running. So the higher they are, the longer that specific meter has been running without a power loss. There's a ton of other exciting work that I'm doing with figuring out these packets um, and also decoding where the messages are going and how they're bouncing across the network. I'd love for you to help out, check out the wiki, join the Discord, um, and let's figure these things out. Maybe we'll set some kind of a challenge, maybe a prize of some kind to decode this data. Uh, so ultimately, you can get your power reading um, and we can see what's going on on this network around us. Thanks for watching.